Everyone has a few stories that they don't want to tell. This is one of mine. It was a holiday, and Olivia, myself, and Sophia were driving to be with family. And it was one of the first times that Sophia was aware enough to know that we were going to holiday, to a, on a holiday. Uh, we were going to be with family, big deal, she was excited. And we got a phone call as we were driving. We had left, packed up, left town, we were out of there. And we were, we got this phone call, and it's the phone call you never want to have. It's the phone call that a member of the congregation has died. And so I had to make a decision. While we're driving down the road, we have to make this decision. Do I, do I be a good father and say that I'm with my family, I will see you tomorrow? Or do I go, be a good pastor and I go be with another person's family? And I chose to try to do both. We drove back. I was with the family for a while, and then we went to go be with our family as we celebrated the holiday. And uh, I made, it was a bad decision. I don't know if it would have made a difference in how it all unfolded, what I decided, but in retrospect, I see now that I would have been better served to just, I should have been a good dad, especially while I have young children in the house. I needed to be a good dad and trust that other people in the church can, can be there for, for us. Um, and, we can care for each other as members of the church. I'm the only one who can be the dad to my children. So I, yeah, I, I don't think, it, it got bad though. Like nothing, the family was angry with me. I, I, I got sick the next day and my daughter got sick. And so we were out for the count for that for a while. And, and we, I apologized and we went to PPR, the group that supervises me tried to work it through. We went to my boss, the district superintendent, and tried to work it through. Brought it, got to the point where we brought in a mediator from, uh, from another part of the state just to try to work through what, can we, can we make this up and get back to a healthy relationship? And it got to the point that everything I did made it worse. It, everything just made it worse, and so I stopped. And I would keep on keeping track of of what was going on in that person's life, because you hear things, and you hear about the family, and, and if I could send someone to help, I would, but I'd tell them, don't tell anyone I sent you. Um, it just sucked up all the energy for a while, and it was hard and very depressing. This last summer, I was at some training for uh, moving to a new congregation, and, and uh, some, one of the ladies leading the training talked about the importance of maintaining positive intent Positive intent is the understanding that everyone means well. You believe that other people have a positive intent. And that to maintain that in the church is essential. Not to say that positive and do, meaning well, positive intent and doing well always line up. That's a different issue. You can mean well and not do well. But uh, to believe that everyone means well, that's what it looks like to be the body of Christ. Romans 12, Paul talks about how we, are, we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function. And we who are many are one body of Christ, in Christ, and individually members one of another. And, and so this positive intent, this trust we have of each other, is the same way that the brain trusts the blood that the heart sends. And the, the, the heart trusts the oxygen that lungs send. And the kidneys trust that the... The, the liver has filtered out the toxins in the blood. I mean, we, we trust, each part of the body trusts itself. And if you lose that trust, the body starts to fly apart. And what this counselor this summer, uh, this training was talking about is this trust that we believe each person means well. Positive intent. If you go look it up online, you'll find a lot of articles about the importance of positive intent for a, a healthy life and a good work place and, and all of that. But we have to trust that even when the heart is not working great, that doesn't mean that we stop accepting the blood it sends. That means that we, we, get, we don't blow apart, we draw closer to help. When the lungs are struggling, we still need the oxygen that the lungs send. We, keep on, we find health in pulling together. What, what happens when we lose this positive intent, this, this gracefulness and patience we have with each other, well, everything becomes 
something to get angry about. The way I sign my letters, as you may have noticed, I sign my letters peace, comma, Andy, because I truly wish for the person to re who receives the letter to be at peace. I, I was reading in, in Matthew about um, Jesus saying how he did not come to be served, but to serve, and for a while, and sometimes I still do, I, I sign my letters, your servant. I think it's fitting. That is what I am. I am your servant. And I, I, started signing, I started doing this during the time when this whole situation, the story I was telling you about, was unfolding. And the, the fact that I changed the way I signed my letters was not taken as just something Andy did. It was taken as an insult because it was received as I no longer wished for that family to be at peace. So going from signing my letters peace to your servant became not a way to, for me to be able to clarify to this family and to everyone that I'm here as a servant. It became one more thing to be angry about. It's that loss of positive intent. And we do this ourselves. We do this ourselves. Like that, we, we do it. Whenever we, there's always someone in a, in a family, or you, you go to the family reunion, and, and that one person who starts to open their mouth, and before they can get a word out, you're like cringing. What are they going to say this time? Yeah, you don't trust that person. You've lost positive intent. We especially see it with our politicians, with our politics, where you start to hear the news and you hear one of those names that, that triggers a reaction. Nancy Pelosi or Mitch McConnell or Obama or Trump or one of these names. And as soon as you hear the name, you, you wince and you're, oh, what are they going to say this time? Right? Because you don't trust their positive intent. A politician pointed this out not that long ago. In the summer of 2016, George W. Bush said, too often we judge other groups by their worst examples while judging ourselves by our best intentions. We judge other groups by their worst examples, the worst thing they've ever done. But we judge ourselves and our groups and people like us by our best intentions, we, the best thing we've intended. What if church is the place that we practice believing in best intentions, the place where we learn to trust each other as we remember how much we need each other, so that when there is confusion and challenges and problems, as there often will be, right, we pull together instead of flying apart. Right? I don't, counselors, trained counselors, they'll call it positive intent. I call it being graceful. Right? To be full of grace for the other. When you walk in this door, for me to be full of grace to you is to offer you the gift of patience and trust. Because I believe everyone who is here is here to be gathered in the name of Christ and for good. That, that's what I, I give you when you walk in the door. I give you that trust, and I hope you give that to me. I hope we're maintaining that graceful stance to each other. It is essential that we have this, especially at moments like this. This, this moment in the, in the life of this church, Shalbina Methodist Church, I've been here for three, three months and change, and we've started some things. And there are things that haven't happened for a while, some of them. And some people are trying some new things, new ideas. And so we're kind of fumbling right now. If the church is the body of Christ, <clears throat> right now the body of Christ is moving like an awkward teenager who has hit a growth spurt and isn't quite sure how to run yet. That, that's us. We're just kind of not moving very well yet. Right, the board is working on how to use this new model, this one board approach. The trustees are starting to do work that uh, has not been taken care of in a while. We're, we're looking at our budget, and we're going to be uh, sharing that budget with everyone on November 19th and to have that openness and transparency about our budget. That, that's something we haven't done. Right? All the staff, we're trying to figure out how all the staff will work together under a new approach to, to supervision. Uh, we want to make sure that, that youth and children are part of our, our Christmas in December 10th. And so I'm sure we're going to fumble around on that a bit as well. Not that we don't mean well. Well, it's just we're trying new, new things. And so we as a church, as we try these new things, there will be plenty of opportunities for people to get their toes stepped on. And there have been toes that have already been stepped on. I know this, right? Sometimes it's been my toes stepped on. We've all, some, we've, we've had our toes stepped on as we're trying to work this out. That does not mean anyone doesn't mean well. It means that we as a body of Christ are trying to figure out how to move this body in a new way. 
As the body of Christ, when we don't have this trust and this patience, this graceful approach to each other, what happens, it's something like the body of Christ developing an autoimmune disease. When, you, uh, when a body it becomes allergic to itself, you know, you, you, that's an autoimmune disease. Well, the most uh, well-known would be multiple sclerosis. When your body attacks your own nervous system and you stop losing the ability to move and, or move rightly or, or to move, and that, that's the risk. Right? If we don't recognize each other as meaning well, then, then we can cause some real problems. Let me invite you to commit and recommit to being a community that practices trusting each other, of being graceful with each other, of being patient, of maintaining this belief in positive intent, if you want the language of psychology or the language of, of the church, being graceful. Eric Anderson, the pastor at Palmyra, who he was my pastor when I was in college, and he had a sign on his door that to this day has, become, has been my guide on this. Never attribute to malice what you can instead attribute to ignorance. Never attribute to ill will, malice, never, attri never attribute something, never think someone did something evil just to be evil. Instead attribute it, if you can, to ignorance. They just didn't know, what you, know better. And that is almost always the case. It's not that anyone's trying to do bad things, it's just they didn't know better. So many of our fumbles and our miscues and our bruises are caused by not knowing. And so we, I, I believe we can start by assuming not that someone tried to hurt me or you or any of us, but they didn't know well and we just need to talk to them and say, what, help me understand. What are you trying to do? What, what, what's happening here? Help, help me understand. Now this sounds well and good. Um, you might respond that uh, blindly trusting people can cause problems. What if someone truly doesn't, doesn't mean well? That, that's a whole different sermon, but yes, it does happen. It's very rare, but yes, there are situations where someone does mean ill. Save that for another Sunday. The other thing you might ponder is, what about the, the, the distinction between meaning well and doing well? And there is a difference. I mean well, I don't always do well. When doing well matters, we lean on each other and we help each other do well. Uh, this is uh, at the end of Romans 12, Paul writes, do not overcome evil with good, but overcome ev don't, do not overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Set up ways of living that are good together so you, you handle what is broken and not right. right? So what, what's that look like? Uh, if I want to spend some money, I want to do something for the good of the church, I mean well. No matter whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, I mean well. The question is, what do I need to do to make sure I actually do well? If I'm going to spend money, <laughs> this church's money, first I, I've got to talk to Deb, the secretary, to make sure someone puts eyes on it before I do anything. And, and then, uh, in the process of doing it, Lori Wilt, the, the treasurer, is going to look at it make sure that not only do I mean well, but am I doing well. And then that will go into a monthly report that goes before the board, and so nine more people are going to look at it. If I, before I spend a dollar of church money, right, there, there are 11 people involved every time I spend church money, and that is a good thing. I, I appreciate that. That is good, because I know I always mean well, but wh whether I always do well is a different matter, and I appreciate the help of those 11 people to make sure that my meaning and my doing line up. And that, that's what we do. We have like safe sanctuary. We, we all mean well. I trust all of you to mean well with children, but doing well then means that we, we make sure that we have two people in the room with children at all times, just in case, right? That, well, we, that's why we have a yearly audit. That's why before I was ordained, I had three different psych evaluations, not because anyone doubted whether I meant well to be a pastor, but they just needed to make sure I was going to do well. We're going to move into the rest of our worship in a moment, begin responding to the Word of God, and let me give you something to do. Let me invite you not just to commit and recommit to trusting each other, uh, assuming each other has a positive intent. Let me invite you to express that. So when we pass the peace, instead of saying, peace be with you, which is our usual thing we say, let me invite you to say, I trust you. Make eye contact, look at that person, say, you know, I trust you, because that's what we do. We trust each other. We don't trust each other to be perfect. We trust each other to mean well, and then we'll work together on, on the doing well.
Thanks be to God. Amen.